Today we're going to talk about how motivation, psychology and mind games can have impacts on winning games of 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. So when we are trying to command our little armies across the tabletop, there's actually really quite a lot that we have going on at the same time. You have to try and think through a grand strategy for what your army is trying to do over the course of the game, make individual turn-based decisions and try not to forget any important aspects of commanding your army. You've got to bear in mind all of your opponent's units, what they can do and what they might be trying to do with their big strategy. And that's all going on at the same time while you're chatting and socialising with your opponent. While you're trying to process all of this at the same time, it's not always the easiest to tell if you're making all the decisions completely rationally or if you're allowing emotions or external factors to impact on your gameplay. In this video we're just going to have a talk about the various things that might impact on how you play your game or how your opponent plays theirs, just so it's a bit easier to be aware of these things when you're actually playing a game and hopefully perhaps catch yourself if you see yourself doing something silly in the future. I do think that there are plenty of games in Warhammer 40k that are purely lost because of the attitude of the player, because they've become distracted from making proper tactical decisions each turn. If everyone just plays the game of 40k mechanically to the best of their ability, then needless to say, then they would likely win more games. Basically, you just need to make sure that your army is executing your grand strategy, and also making the best turn-on-turn -turn decisions for each unit that you have under your command. I'd say probably the single biggest example of how you can undermine this by the attitude to playing the game is where I see people give up on a game way before they've actually lost. It's true that sometimes in 40k you can predict how it's going to end, particularly if some of your key units get deleted turn 1, then you might really have an uphill struggle to get back in the game. The thing is, sometimes some early losses like this can have a far greater psychological impact than they actually have on your army's functionality. In its most simple terms, if you give up on a game, then you have zero chance of winning it, if you keep on going in every game that you'd given up on, you will have some chance of winning it. That chance might not be enormously high, but in every single situation there is a chance. Your opponent might have some incredibly poor luck later in the game, you might be able to focus on winning the admission or objectives, or you might just be overestimating your opponent's list's ability to do the similar amount of damage on subsequent turns. In a turn-based strategy game such as 40k, by its very nature, each turn will be a big swing in favour of the person who has it. You're likely to do a fair bit of damage on your turn, and your opponent might hit you back even harder on theirs. The decision process should be the same, you just need to appraise what you have left, and how you can best employ it to try and win you the game. It might involve you switching strategies, maybe hiding and going on for objectives on the last couple of turns, or in other circumstances you might need to do exactly the opposite, play very aggressive and try and kill multiple enemy units to try and get yourself back in the game. Just as common as people actually conceding, as people mentally giving up, deciding they've almost certainly already lost and putting no thought into the movement or firing of their units from there on in. It might well get the game done a little bit faster if that's the most important thing, but if you're actually trying to win more games then you still need to absolutely think, how can I get the best value out of this unit this turn and position it optimally and really think about which of your opponent's units you want to delete best. Some people might even have this attitude right from the very start of the game if they know that they're in a bad matchup, and it's true that in 40k some armies will very much counter each other. Your chances might be very low, but they're going to be even lower if you're not trying to maximise your odds. Personally, in games that I'm losing, I just like to try and maximise the amount of points that I can score, and just treat it as a bit of a rearguard puzzle to see how I can make the best out of a bad situation. Typically, I'll only concede when my options are really, really limited, to the extent where I know I have no chance of winning, and it's also not going to be all that much fun to try and achieve some random stuff. Say if I just have a troops unit and a character sat at the back of the board and my opponent has half their army left or something. So I'd say the biggest psychological pitfall is not giving up and keeping your troops going and playing rationally. There's a few other pitfalls that might make you not play your units as rationally as you could. You really need to keep the mission in mind. Basically throughout a game of 40k, it's going to be more important that you kill enemy troopers towards the start of the game to stop them destroying your army. But that's going to be less and less important towards the end of the game until the last turn where it's literally almost no point and you need to be going almost purely for objectives. It's very easy to lose an entire game because you are too focused on destroying one enemy super unit. You might well completely get rid of it, but ignore a different priority that you should have done, say moving your units onto objectives or destroying units that are holding objectives in the enemy army. That could have actually won you the game, where you might well have killed more units, but you might actually lose the game overall. I think that forgetting about the mission can be a hard one sometimes, just because you do have to gradually shift your priorities throughout the course of the game. 
I'll also mention that sometimes the most optimal thing to do is to have patience and restraint. You might be itching to get your big fighter unit out onto the board and causing as much damage as possible, but in some games it's just not going to be worth it until later, and maybe it might just be better if that unit just stayed safe and kept an objective all game. This can also be a bit of a factor if your opponent's playing a little bit slow as well, and you're eager to keep the game moving quickly. Don't be afraid to take a little bit of time yourself to think about the various different units that you have and how you're best going to employ them. In general, most things will be fairly obvious, but sometimes you do have difficult decisions if they really are going to be game-changing, and don't be afraid to take a few seconds to think that through. It's not always the easiest to pause and take that headspace time, particularly when your opponent's waiting on you. I wouldn't take it to extremes or anything, but sometimes you do just definitely need to properly think a decision through if it's going to make the difference between winning or losing. Finally, I'd say don't be afraid to try and achieve something that's a little bit improbable or gamey if it is something that's perfectly within the rules to be able to do. For example, if you're trying to tie up a tank with a guard infantry squad, maybe if you stretched it to its absolute limit of mobility with the unit coherency, you might be able to tie up another tank. Perhaps you've got an artillery piece that needs to be deployed out of line of sight, and maybe you can only just fit within a terrain piece. There's nothing to stop you really trying to just squeeze it in. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, you can just put it elsewhere. Another situation that I had was when I was deploying some guardsmen against an Eldar fly spam list. I just realised that every single guardsman that's out of cover is going to die. I'd originally deployed them a little bit loosely within the cover, but I realised that if I absolutely bunched every guardsman up to the absolute maximum, then every single guardsman in my army could be out of line of sight turn one. And by making that happen, it actually was quite a big factor in deciding the game, because they wouldn't have achieved much if they were outside the ruins, and they would have all just died to become kill points. Basically, you just need to try not to be afraid to absolutely maximise what a unit can do. If it doesn't quite work, then it doesn't quite work, and you just don't do it. But there's generally no harm in trying. The next thing, I'd try and have a realistic idea of units and abilities on the table. This is quite a lot of the skill of playing 40k in general, but it's important not to let your game knowledge get warped by psychology. Perhaps the biggest example of this is something like the Distraction Carnifex, the idea that comes from a Tyranid player setting up a Carnifex on the flank of the army, which is theoretically a big scary threat, as a big threatening miniature, and it's a monster that's vaguely hard to kill, meaning that almost all the time that model will get shot by the opponent, as they don't want it in their lines, even if in reality the model might be quite easy to block the movement of, and if it hits their lines it might not do quite as much damage as you might be expecting, or it might do less damage than the rest of the army, and is now not getting shot as much because you're focusing on that Carnifex. This one just mainly comes down to having good target priority, and not getting psyched out by certain units in 40k that look far more threatening than they actually are. A Knight Gallant might be a modern day equivalent of a Distraction Carnifex. It's very big, potentially very fighty, but point for point it's fairly cheap and tough, and you might be far better prioritising other enemy elements rather than eliminating that straight away, and just ignore or move block it for a turn or two. On the other hand, many units that don't look particularly threatening could be absolutely vital for the mission. Things like Orc Gretchen, they're never going to do all that much damage to you, but they very well could be the things that win games by sitting on an objective at the back of the board, scoring victory points all game long. The other thing I'd like to mention about knowing unit's abilities is people's perception of luck. I'm sure we all know people who are constantly cursing the dice gods and feel they're very unlucky as a person. It might well be you. In reality, no one is just unlucky as a person. Every time you roll a dice, it has an equal chance of landing on all sides unless it's weighted or something. And in general, I tend to find the people who find themselves to be the most unlucky are the ones whose armies and decision making have exposed themselves to having the best chance of having some bad luck. I know any individual set of dice rolls can go against you, you can have entire games where a lot of the important rolls go against you, but over the course of many rolls and many games, your luck will balance out. You'll have as much good luck as bad. Sometimes though, good luck can be hard to appreciate when it's coming your way. Sure, you might have rolled terribly for your shooting phases all game, but perhaps you want the roll to go first, and that's usually quite a big deal. Or perhaps you've already got lucky by playing a mission that's actually really suited to your army as opposed to your opponent's. I try not to let any perception of your own luck, good or bad or otherwise, have any real bearing on whether or not you make certain decisions. It is a dice game, and a fair bit of the skill is just in risk management, and you need to have a realistic idea of your units and abilities. That's another very good way for feeling that you're unlucky if you think that your units are going to perform better than they will. A Vindicare Sniper is quite a good example of this. Sure, he will hit on twos, and he will wound on twos typically which sounds amazing, but if you actually work out the maths, then he on average only causes a wound 69% of the time when shooting. That's less than a lot of people would expect, hence the feeling of I always seem to roll a 1 for my Vindicare when he's shooting. Statistically, you should be doing that around one third of the time. In terms of the actual interplay between yourself and your opponent, 
There's certainly some room for some mind games going on. In general, I don't think it's very polite to try and be too manipulative or try and convince your opponent to make bad decisions, particularly in more casual games, which I think there's always going to be some element of that as they try and gauge up and respond to the threat level of the units in your army. You can certainly keep your battle plan pretty hidden with certain tactics, particularly with things like redeployment options. You could put a whole load of units on one side of the board, and then if you have one of the various warlord traits that allows you to redeploy units before the game begins, you can move them all over to the other side of the board, hopefully catching them flat-footed. It's not really a mind game as such, but it's a way of keeping information hidden by using that powerful rule. You can also do similar with very fast moving options, things like Eldar Shining Spears, who could very easily deploy on one side of the deployment zone, and with the use of something like Quickening, could be over the other side in one turn. In general, if you are in a competitive game, and the win is kind of important, it's probably best to try and avoid any urges to tell your opponent that what they're doing is a bad idea tactically. In a competitive game, you do have to let your opponent make mistakes, otherwise you're not going to be giving yourself much chance for any tactical advantages in generalship wise. I generally advise talking through things like gotcha moments early in the game to make sure they're not just doing something because they're not aware of a powerful rule. And that also gives you the advantage of if you've already told them about the rule earlier in the game, you don't need to tell them as they go along and you can allow them to make that mistake. If we are thinking about getting a bit more manipulative, which I'm not necessarily advocating at all, sometimes sharing information at the right time can actually help out your game plan a bit if bigging up a certain rule or unit's combat prowess or something could change the way that your opponent plays the game. Say if you really didn't want your opponent to charge this unit and engage this tank in combat to stop it firing, you could talk about that unit's combat abilities to maybe try and put them off a bit. If you do have distraction carnifex type units, then you could certainly talk about how big and scary they are to hopefully get them prioritised over your normal stuff. Again, just to stress that I don't think that this is particularly polite, so I try and keep it to a minimum, particularly in casual games. Conversely, if your opponent seems very keen to talk about how much you shouldn't charge this unit, you should possibly think about taking any advice of the grain of salt in a competitive setting, as when you're playing a game against them, they probably don't have the best interest of your own model soldiers at heart. In addition to the decisions actually being made on the table, and there's sometimes in 40k a little bit of a clash of wills between the two players, particularly with rules disputes or interpretations of the rules, I think it's important not to back down too easily if you do think that you're right, and the thing is important to whether or not you might win or lose a game. If you do have a game where there's plenty of situations where the rules aren't massively clear, I think it's important to be at least somewhat assertive if you just let your opponent have their way every single time that there's any sort of debate, just because they're a little bit more assertive or forceful than you are, and that is likely to have an effect. So try and make sure that there's actually some give and take going on, unless of course you can find something in the rules to say they are in the right rules-wise. In a related matter when it comes to conflict, I try not to let your opponent's poor sportsmanship change how you play a game. The vast majority of people I've played games with in 40k tend to be really nice people, but occasionally you will run into characters who just aren't very pleasant to play against, make a lot of rules errors in their favour, be incredibly draconian with play sequencing, or just be unpleasant to have a game with for various other reasons. In general I just try not to let it get under your skin, and make sure it doesn't make any difference to how you play your models on the table. In general, I feel like a lot of the people who have worse sportsmanship in the game often care about winning the most, so I personally try and react to poor sportsmanship like this with still just playing the best game that I can anyway, as I don't really believe with rewarding such behaviour with just giving them easy wins. I guess that is just more personal philosophy though. Finally, on a more positive note, I do feel that it is generally in your interest to have both people having a good time, as if you're getting on well with someone and both people are playing fairly and with good sportsmanship, I generally feel that people won't mind losing quite as much as if they're finding the game really quite unpleasant. I think you tend to see most top tournament players that I've met be generally quite pleasant and engaging people to play against, partly for this reason, as I do think that it lets you have a little bit more leniency and flexibility from the opponent in-game, and also because it means that you have a better reputation, as well as the obvious benefits that obviously it's more fun to be having fun when you're playing a war game, otherwise why on earth would we be doing it in the first place? So overall, I do think there's quite a lot of psychology in the game of 40k, and the right attitude can certainly lead to you winning more games. I say the single most important thing is not giving up when there is still a small chance of a victory out of the game, keeping the mission in mind, and having a realistic idea of what your units and your opponents can do on the table, and not getting that influenced by any external factors. I'm sure there's far more that could be said on the subject of psychology and mentality in games of 40k, so if you have any ideas then please let me know down in the comments below, it would be good to read your thoughts. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Autobets Tactics for new 40k content coming out every day.
And if you have been enjoying the channel's videos recently, then any support on Patreon is greatly appreciated, as it is what keeps all of the videos coming, as it's what allows me to dedicate the time towards making them, as opposed to my regular job. There are a few other benefits to being a Patreon member, such as seeing some videos early, voting on polls for what sort of videos should come next on the channel, and the occasional prize draw where I post out some free miniatures. If any of that sounds interesting, or you'd just like to support the channel, then feel free to have a look down in the description below. And a big thank you to my current patrons for making this all possible. Thanks very much for listening, and I hope to see you guys next time.